All right. Welcome to the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through technology inspire conversations. If you want to know about the latest tools and tactics for finding talent online, this is your show. Today's episode is a vendor edition. This podcast is sponsored in part by our friends at Adzuna, the quality obsessed job search engine that's taking the market by storm. Adzuna wants to get America hiring by allowing businesses to zero in on the right candidates. Cut your cost per application and engage with high quality candidates with Adzuna. Visit adzuna.com slash hire to get started. And by Emissary, a text recruiting platform built to make candidate engagement and recruitment automation easy. Emissary features include a texting inbox to manage campaigns, one-to-one texting, short codes for recruiting, and even a recruiting chatbot. Head over to emissary.ai and book your demo today. Former head of marketing and recruiting and innovation for Allegis Global Solutions and founder of his own recruiting and marketing firm, TalentNet Media, Craig Fisher has recently taken on the role of CEO of NAC.io, a Dallas-based personalized job board startup created by engineers for engineers. He took over the position earlier this month from their co-founder and former CEO, Leroy Ware, who is now taking on the role of a chief technology officer at the company. Craig, welcome to the show. Uh, what attracted you to NAC? And give us a quick history of the product itself. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, good to be here and glad to see you. Um, so uh, I uh, was chased by uh, NAC's co-founder, Leroy Ware, uh, for about a year on LinkedIn uh, to look at the product, look at the approach they were taking to it. Um, a lot of that approach, which is, you know, uh, the inbound model for job search and careers is stuff that he's seen me preach about online for many, many years. That's, that's been my thing since the you know, late 2000s. I take that same approach to employer branding when I help job seekers look for jobs. Uh, it works all the way around, and I think it's a really good approach. I don't like direct sales. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is kind of my style. So they based a lot of the way they formulated this product and their approach to helping engineers find jobs on that sort of inbound formula. And um, to my great surprise and, uh, and, and joy, I found that, you know, it really works if you look at it from the engineer's point of view, uh, which is what they're doing. So finally, uh, you know, at one point I, I took a look at it, at, it was after I had exited uh, Allegis Global Solutions and was really ramping up consulting work on my end uh, and, and was really busier than ever. Um, but Leroy was insistent. He, he prowled around uh, and, and kept poking me. And, uh, and uh, so finally I started, uh, you know, I kind of looked in on what they were doing uh, the entire time. I just didn't have time to do anything about it. Yeah. And so I finally scheduled a conversation after having a look and, and really understanding the message and what they were trying to accomplish. And I was really surprised. And I said, let's, you know, let's schedule some time. And I said, all right, so how can I help you out? I'm an, I'm an advisor to several tech companies. Um, you know, I do this on a regular basis. He said, yeah, we want to do more than that. We'd like you to be our CEO. And I said, all right, you realize I have these other obligations. And he said, oh, no, no, we want you to do all that stuff. still. So that's important. We, you know, we want you to be that guy uh, and still give us some uh, direction and, you know, uh, bring the people to the platform. And, uh, and so that's what we're doing. Nice. So g- give me some examples here of, of how it's different for developers, why they like it and how it's kind of focused on them versus, you know, your traditional job boards out there and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, you and I, and, and a lot of our friends have this conversation a lot that, Engineers don't like LinkedIn, right? You're right. not gonna you're not gonna recruit engineers on LinkedIn. Um, GitHub, I mean, yeah, you can reach out and kind of do recruiting there, but it's not very straightforward, right? Certainly, um, Dice is good. They actually like Dice, um, but uh, very often they find themselves wishing there was a more streamlined and more targeted version of Dice that individual hiring managers or individual recruiters could use. Um, or that could be managed for teams on the employer side, but with very strict matching technology to ensure that the engineers aren't deluged with, you know, technology requests uh, for jobs that don't match them at all. And so uh, the, the founders 
most of them are engineers. Uh, I've always said don't, and we all say this, don't, don't create recruiting software without recruiters uh, in, in the mix. And so uh, one of the co-founders is a very uh, good recruiter who came from Allegis. Uh, he, worked with, he worked with me there uh, and has just gone on to do amazing things. And um, they, they recruited it with, uh, they recruited him, he recruited Leroy actually to develop the product. Uh, and, and they did it with, uh, you know, the, the care about the hectic lifestyle and engineer leads in mind. And the uh, idea that we're going to be remote, a lot of us, and uh, they put, you know, strong ability to filter for remote work and multiple gigs. And so it's sort of Upwork meets Dice, but with what's going to be basically uh, a kind of ATS um, on the employer side where you can manage teams and hiring managers and, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down through the process. But with smart AI in the middle where engineers can select themselves in to a job if they want to um, and get really, uh, well, okay. So with DICE, you can apply to jobs, um, but you're not really sure if you're applying to a recruiter or an employer sometimes. Um, you really don't often have direct contact with the hiring manager uh, through that first interaction. And if a team on the employer side wants to, they can give hiring managers direct access to these candidates. So yes, they're gonna rely on their recruiting team still. Yes, they're probably gonna do programmatic advertising, buying still, but if they have very specific needs for tough to find engineering jobs and they wanna to talk directly to the people who have the exact skills they're looking for, they can get that uh, quickly going and, and get candidates back within the first 48 hours. Okay. Um, you know, there's lots of uh, tech focused job sites out there, job boards, there's probably oh, yeah. 40 or 50 of them for tech. Easy. Yep. Um, how do you think you can succeed in this market? It's a crowded market uh, mm -hmm. from, a, from a technology standpoint. Um, and uh, it's been tried before. So what do you think is, mm -hmm. is different for, for NAC? So the, first of all, the, the lightweight and scalable technology that it's built on is pretty darn good. So these guys are all uh, serverless uh, technology engineers. Um, they build these uh, really uh, scalable, lightweight and powerful templates um, that can be repeated and they can pivot anything I think this product needs, they can crank out in a week. So if I say, everybody's done this, let's do something different. Let's innovate. Let's focus more on getting, you know, kids into STEM. Let's focus more on the diversity challenges. Um, you know, let's find ways to do this. Not only are they really smart and very successful people, um, but they're really dedicated to all of those things. So uh, I don't really consider this um, competing with the 40 or 50 other old technologies that are out there. You know, I consider this an approach that engineers will like, and that's our focus first. Yeah. Uh, I kind of asked that question because uh, just recently, last week, there was an article uh, about the uh, about Hire.com. Mm -hmm a very popular, uh, well, somewhat popular uh, tech-based uh, recruiting platform that got $150 million in funding um, mm -hmm. in the last several years. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's reported to be going under, under, going under or, or for sale. Um, let me read a few quotes here from the article, if I could, Craig, mm -hmm. and just get your thoughts on some of this. Um, this is from the information.com. It says, hired having been tr uh, having trouble with its premium recruiting model before the uh, even before coronavirus hit in 2019, it missed its revenue goals by more than 50%, according to people close to the company. Um, it now employs fewer than 80, down from about 250 at its peak, mm -hmm. uh, offering an alternative to traditional headhunting for tech talent. It expanded to 17 cities globally. At its peak, the company generated more than 10, more than tens of millions of dollars uh, per year, but it's not been profitable for the majority of its years, according to a person familiar with the company's finances. So interesting uh, article there on, uh, on hiring and what's happened with them. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've got a great domain name. They've got, they had millions of funding. Yeah. What do you think went wrong there? Why didn't they succeed? So 
they're based on the traditional uh, ad revenue model, just like all job boards are. Um, there are better ways to do it. I intend to crack that code. Um, so what you have now is um, a series of apps and agencies who manage these apps that buy media in bulk for large organizations. There's very little consideration for small and medium sized companies to actually have a subscription model where they can you know, get direct access to engineers. Um, there's also very little thought on the uh, candidate side for the, the candidate experience. If the candidate is responsible for deciding whether that job board is successful or not, not the employers uh, where the, the revenue model traditionally is, uh, I, think, I think job boards will have more success. So uh, I'm going into this with eyes wide open, having seen all of the models. I mean, I've been doing this since 1995, right? Recruiting tech engineers and doing the marketing side of it as well and the advertising piece. Uh, I've got an advertising degree. All of these things come together for me to say, it's time to shake that up and, uh, and let's come up with something different where everybody profits, everybody is successful. And it's not a 15% markup for everything that everyone does, uh, which is how media is traditionally bought. I'm on the site now, it says your personalized job board, thousands of tech listings. Um, are all those, uh, are you scraping jobs at all? Is it, um, yeah. or some of the employers on there posting yeah. those jobs? Yeah, so there are some uh, employers on there posting jobs. Um, there will soon be for the engineers, a featured listing that is just matched to employers that directly put in jobs. All the rest of the jobs on the site right now are scraped. Um, and, you know, very often, to find scraped jobs on any board, including LinkedIn, that are accurate to what you do as an engineer or any kind of job candidate, uh, it's very difficult or you have to pay for it. Um, there's very few free sites that really accurately uh, get you in the process to apply for a job that fits you. So this does that. It really does work well. Uh, we've got um, something like 5,000 engineers on the site that love it. My job, part of that is to grow that database, um, but we're being very picky and we're being very selective. So we'll also be the same way about recruiters and employers that get in on the other side. All right. So how do you, how do you track developers? I mean, that's the, you know, it's going to be a core foundation of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to try How are you going to do that? That's a hard thing to do today. I've been doing it for years, right? So that's not a problem for me. Half my network is developers <laughs> uh, and I've got a pretty big network. So that's not going to be an issue. Um, my approach has always been uh, be amongst them. And uh, like you, I started doing my own technology and development and coding and, and all these things back in the 90s so I could understand better what it's like to be in their shoes. And so I could also lurk in their hangouts and ask legitimate questions and contribute to the conversation rather than just try to be a recruiter, right? And so, you know, I go with this uh, inbound approach that is a five to one give to ask ratio when I'm putting things out in the world. So, you know, be legit, ask real questions, contribute to the conversation five times before you ever ask. And then when that ask is, it's not anything hard or pushy. It's just, hey, we're hiring or we have a great place for you to find jobs if you're interested. Yeah. And, you know, that's, it's proven, it works. Uh, I've written about it uh, extensively and done research about it. And uh, it's, it's not offensive to job seekers uh, and who are in those, in those roles. They don't like in mails. They don't, um, you know, really like advertising. Uh, they do like emails and they do like phone calls and they like text messages. So I have to get in their point of view somehow uh, in, in those arenas. Is texting built into NEC? Is it part of the uh, communication stack? So it will be. Um, it, it is in a version that I have seen. Now, one of the cool things about this is Leroy Ware's wife, Heather, uh, is a brilliant designer and all of the beautiful stuff you see on the NAC site um, is all done by her. And uh, so she's reskinning, I guess is what they say, um, the version that has the two-way communications and um, 
you know, they're, they're kind of bringing me in at a pivotal, pivotal point uh, to get, you know, friends of mine like you and, you know, our other friends who would like to use a tool like this and have it be really functional and successful. They're bringing me in at the point where we can start to shape that. And as soon as we get this uh, kind of beautiful front layer uh, added to everything, I think January 1st, I'm going to let everybody beta test it and we're going to figure out, you know, what's the next iteration of, of the job site. Yep. What, uh, give me a sense of what the experience is like for the employer. What can they do on the platform today? Right. So there is a version right now. And th the really nice thing about this, if you haven't looked at it, there is, um, there are two apps uh, for um, NAC. One is NAC for engineers and the other is NAC for employers or hiring managers. I can't remember, but if you go to NAC, that IO, you, you can see at the bottom, there's, there's apps for- Oh, you have two apps. Yeah, yeah, okay. Android and, uh, yeah, the, in fact, it's gonna be a suite of apps. They'll be an act for recruiters and they'll all, they'll all work together. Um, but the, uh, the, they're web apps, right? And the, uh, the, the mobile um, experience is, is wonderful. And so if you're a hiring manager right now, you can download that app and put, put jobs into the system and the system will get, uh, you know, engineers who have self-selected into the universe matched to you. Uh, and, you know, there's a fee involved with hiring them, but it's, uh, you know, less than half of what a traditional recruiting process would cost. So that's the, that's the, uh, the model is a percentage of salary? Right now. Um, okay. It'll change. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to a point where we've got enough users that uh, we'll be able to augment that model. And, and, and that's one of the things that I, you know, am tasking myself with. How do we improve that? Yep. Uh, yeah, on the, one of the articles I read about it, it said, uh, quoting you, mm -hmm. it's almost like a, it's almost like a lightweight dating app where the profiles on both sides are really good and well matched. Um, you know, job matching is something that uh, I've seen a lot of in the last five years. Oh, yeah. Um, to me, it's sort of, you know, it's a feature of a, of a recruiting platform. Yeah. It's not a reason to start a, 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 a business, I think. No, it's right. table stakes. Right. Um, yeah. uh, why do you think that job matching hasn't really been done that well over the, over the last few years? Because, you know, to me, as a seeker, you know, I've always really focused on the keyword of the, of the job title as mm -hmm. the most important thing as a seeker. Right. I'm looking for a job. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, people are started going beyond that a bit in terms of, but the problem with that is you've got the, the bad job descriptions out there, right. They're not described well, mm -hmm. uh, but just talk about job matching uh, if you could in, in, in that sense. Yeah. So I'll give you a real easy example. Um, if you are a JavaScript developer, which those are highly sought after now, Right, the, most of your uh, mobile and web app developers are are JavaScript and serverless, and you know that kind of developer. They're not um, they're not Java developers and and Visual C plus plus developers. They are uh, more of that uh, lightweight, scalable design uh, developer. And if you have JavaScript in your resume, you're going to get a ton of job matching for Java, and uh, no one's done a good job to fix that. Uh, right. And so if you have visual basically blank in your resume, you're going to get um, jobs for visual everything. And no one's done a good job of fixing that. And so the uh, the learning technology that is, you know, at work here, we're trying to make it smart enough to tell the difference because engineers get really put out with all the jobs they get that don't fit. And then they start to not trust the process and the platform. And so we want to make it so that it is really uh, fine-tuned to exactly what they need uh, and not blasting them everything else. Gotcha. Is the company funded, Craig, or is it bootstrapped? It's bootstrapped. And funding may happen. Um, you know, I, I fully intend to be working with, um, you know, every ATS, every other uh, kind of product that this could be a fit for or part of. And so there will be partnerships, there will be uh, all kinds of fun things that happen, um, but it's completely bootstrapped. And these guys, like I said, they're, 
they're very successful and they funded it themselves and they really want a product that would work for them or their friends uh, to find jobs. I love that approach because everyone else that goes into this goes into it saying, how can we make a lot of money from employers? And that's not really what their primary goal is. Yeah. You've got one of those, uh, what I call slash careers like me. Mm -hmm. You do this slash this slash yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, Have done that? forever. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Uh, it, I think you and I are kind of similar in that respect. You know, we like doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a sort of a new way to work, mm -hmm. uh, if you will. Yeah, Tim, Tim Ferriss changed my life, you know, 12 years yeah, I mean, ago. Yeah with the 24 hour work week. It, it, at the time I had already uh, started my own, um, you know, staffing business and uh, was also starting to do um, speaking about what I called at the time, the inbound recruitment process and was training my customers on how to do it. So, you know, my whole thing was kind of an open source uh, I'm, I'm all transparent here, Mr. Employer. I'm going to help you fill these jobs, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm doing it with all free technology and just uh, kind of a, a giving spirit and transparency online uh, about attracting people to, you know, fill those job applications out. And I'm going to teach your whole team how to do it. And so it became training and consulting and speaking and um, writing and, you know, all those other things. And at one point I was able to sell my part of the staffing business. You know, I became a, an advisor and a uh, board member uh, and, and walk away and do this incredible lifestyle business. And when Allegis came along a few years later, you know, I'm all about keyword optimization and LinkedIn and other places, uh, multiple websites and things like that. They said, we've got a legacy software company that uh, really needs a facelift on their employer brand. They've got a big location in Plano, Texas. And you know, we'd like you to go be a, a head of communications over there in talent acquisition over employer brand recruitment, marketing, and technology. I said, that must be CA Technologies. And they said, yeah, how'd you know? I said, that's my job to know. <laughs> and, and I said, also, uh, you don't have enough money to afford me. <laughs> they said, well, how do you know that? I said, well, this job probably reports to uh, the, uh, is it an RPO job? Yeah, it probably reports to uh, somebody who's, you know, over that account in RPO, and then it reports up to the VP of talent acquisition at CA Technologies. It'll have, you know, maybe two direct reports and, um, you know, a larger matrix organization. They're like, yeah, that's mostly true, except we've got four global marketers that are going to work for you. I'm like, okay, now we're talking about something here. I said, all right. Uh, how'd you find me? They said, well, you were on the first page of Google for employer brand strategy, Dallas. I'm like, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course I was absolutely. Uh, and so all this came together for me to say, all right, this sounds like something I want to do. I'm one of the first employer branding leaders to get a big team of marketers to, to work with me on this global team. Uh, and you know, this is, nearly six years ago. Um, There's a good uh, personal marketing tip in there, you know. Yeah. SEO, get found on Google first page. Get found on Google first page. That's right. And, and on LinkedIn results as well. Yep. Yep. So uh, and that, was, that was by design, but I told them going in, I said, you can't afford me. So I'm going to still do this, 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 and this. Can you accept that? And they're like, I think we could work something out. So the deal was they gave me 20 paid days a year to make money doing whatever else I liked, including, you know, going on stage and consulting with other companies, they, I sold it to them that it's good for them. It will help them get business. And, uh, you know, it was Allegis Global Solutions and uh, they've worked out great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, appreciate your time today, Craig. Last question. Uh, lots of uh, consolidation going on in the HR tech space right mm -hmm. now. Seems all the, uh, you know, the major ATSs are basically in a war for technology now. That's right. Buying up all the smaller players and adding these little features and plugging in uh -huh. stuff here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, pretty crazy yeah. times, right? Yeah, you noticed that, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is crazy times. So uh, I'm currently doing um, a lot of work with one of the, let's say, really big ATSs um, with uh, Jim Schneider and Angie Veros and a, a ragtag team of experts um, helping a couple of different companies uh, 
perfect their recruitment marketing and uh, recruitment process models. And uh, we're having a lot of fun doing it. And we're watching all of these things come together, uh, you know, in real time. And, you know, I'm a person who at Allegis pushed to smash uh, multiple technologies into one dashboard. We pushed uh, Paradox Olivia and uh, Hiring Solved into the Smashfly dashboard. And that ended up getting acquired, of course, by Symphony Talent. Um, and Allegis ended up acquiring Hiring Solved. And so, you know, I watch all this stuff because I, I have a little bit of hand in making it happen. And it's funny, the uh, brand Amper um, uh, product that is now owned by the Muse used to be Ajax Workforce Marketing that uh, Jason Seiden and I uh, helped to found and run together. And I helped all that get uh, pushed into play for the Muse. And so, uh, I'm kind of used to this and uh, I'm, you know, here where I am for a specific reason, because at this point in time, this is a real good opportunity to have a badass team of engineers developing recruitment tech for you. Yeah, it's the uh, golden age of HR tech, as I call it, I think. I think so. So awesome. Well, Craig Fisher from NAC.io. It's good to uh, good to see you again. When can we expect some, uh, some more updates to the other uh, product? Yeah, so we'll have um, we'll have the V2 release out uh, January 1st. So, um, you know, have a nice holiday season until then and uh, expect to hear some big things from us uh, real soon. Awesome. Well, again, thanks again. That's going to do for this episode of the RecTech Podcast. Be sure to follow us on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, via the at RecTech Media handle. Uh, you can see every podcast, video, blog that we publish on any of those. Thank you again to my sponsors, Emissary and Adzuna for... Uh, text recruiting and job advertising. Be sure to check them out. Thanks for listening and watching. And remember, always be recruiting. See you next time.